Okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, I, I main singe. It's pretty much all I play. So, um, that's pretty much what I'm going to take you through. Um, I'll take you through almost like a, like a mock game, I guess you can say in a way. Um, excuse me. Uh, give me one second here. I'm just going to fix something. He's... One of the things here, I mean, uh, I'll just show you my runes and masteries real quick. Um, my rune, my mastery is the only thing I really do is uh, in hardness. Um, if I'm going against an AD, I'll go hardness. If I'm going against an AP, I'll go resistance. It's, it's the only thing I switch right there with, with that. Oops. Uh, what the hell? Uh, so my runes, I have three extra rune books here. Um, I have Singe vs. Melee, Singe vs. AP, and Singe vs. Ranged. The only, my AP is obviously for going people against people like Vladimir or... Uh, um, uh, like a rumble, um, you know, maybe a cannon. Um, it depends though with cannon because sometimes he starts AD and then goes into AP. So initially he might you might want armor, um, but by the time it gets to like level six, seven, eight, hopefully you'll be proxying. You won't have to worry about his AP. So um, it's just how you want to play it though. Um, Singe vs melee and then Singe vs range. The only thing is is ranged is AP over time and melee is straight up AP because if you're trading with melee characters level one two and three you want to be able to trade with them properly um see what i'm saying because if you're going against ranged well you're not going to be trading with anybody so yeah you're not going to be on top of a nidley or a jace i mean at level one so you, you're not going to do any damage so why are you going for straight up ap so i look at it so so that's why i uh, read those two books uh those books are actually the same ones run by like inverter composer and and so forth a lot of the like the higher level singes so. No, not at all. I mean, if they're essentially, I mean, who who do you have? If if they're not AP up top, you only have one person in the game that's AP. That's the way I look at it. You know, so um, and then if if it gets to the point where they're fed, then you know I'll go and build um. Uh, Negatron cloak and you know roll it into something that's you know worthy of an item um, But that's that's later game. So um, Hopefully though with singed so here's the thing with singed he, he's gonna be so he's gonna have so much hit points anyway that uh, There's gonna be essentially no AP character that can burst you one and done. I mean, it's just impossible So at any point if you need to just flip him to the group one singed flip and a little bit of poison is gonna take an AP character down half way anyway so, I mean, if that's the situation what they're carrying, you just go after them and hopefully you'd be okay first. So, anyways, um, I'm going to show you here. Um, I, the way I play Singed is um, I always invade level 1. Um, I think uh, the invade, I'm at, I'm telling you, I'm not joking, bro. I'm at like 80 to 90% first bloods on invades, even in Diamond 1s. Um, unsinged it's ridiculous and if you come in and you're uh, let's just say you're a uh, blue side here um, a lot of people like to go oh, mid right here and they like to come into this brush this is a very very bad invade and I'll tell you why um, if your team's here and you come in here and you see one if they flash where are they going they're going over this wall okay I'm sorry you're not getting anybody that flashes there that's it's bad play you, you blew a flash big or they blew a flash big deal you still don't get first blood for it so if you come up and you come in through this way and you come in through tri bush and you put everybody in this bush right here okay a lot of times what people like to do this happens all the time they'll station people here here you know maybe here um and then up in this tri bush up here they, they like to kind of spread out a little bit or maybe there's people at blue buff and they have one person standing out here well if you bring your team up this wall okay by the time you peek around this corner and somebody's standing right there, that's the first moment they can't see you, is right right there. Okay, I have ghost to singe. Um, I don't give a crap if you flash in any direction. For Yeah, and th if you look here, where do they have the flash? They ain't flashing this way. Yeah, there, there's nothing. So um, essentially, and if they do flash away to this brush right here, um, my ghost can gap close three up to three flashes away. 
you know, because uh, ghost is essentially three flashes. Um, so, um, so that's that right there, and that that's an automatic first blood if if there's somebody's in there. Yes, absolutely, all the time. Yep. If if you're really good and and you see somebody and you want to pick it and you can do that with your mechanics, by all means, go ahead. Um, I'm like 32 years old and I'm getting old as fuck, so my mechanics are good, but they're not great. Like I can't do 20 things on the fly like some of these pros can. Um, I, I just I'm comfortable with flip level one because I know how to use it in lane fine too, so it's not a big deal. Um, it actually allows me to not push my lane too fast also level one because a lot of people that run poison next thing they know it's they're level two and they're up on the tower getting you know and they're in the other team's freezing at level two and you're like fuck and then you're screwed so uh, anyways um so you come in here if there's nobody here come in into this tri bush right here if there's somebody there it just happens every once in a blue but it, it usually doesn't um what you do is you get your team in here um you come around this corner once you peek around this corner here um, by the time they see you, again, they essentially have nowhere to flash. If I run in just I, as soon as people are there. I don't wait because I want to get the first blood. I want to get back. I want to get an item. I want to get a ward or whatever it might be. And I want to get back to lane before I lose anything. I don't want to use my teleport level one. Like, that's it's not why it's there, you know. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second. So anyways, if they're right here and they flash, they're not flashing that way, they're not flashing that way, they're not flashing this, I mean, if they do, essentially, like I said, ghost, first blood, done. So that's why I invade that way. If you do the opposite way where you're red side, go and run and haul ass to tribush, I promise you, nine out of ten times, somebody will face check tribush. Every game. I don't know why, they just fucking do it. And it's, it's essentially, again, almost an automatic kill. I just did it in my last two games that I just played in a game. They won't. I'm, it's going to be very, very rare that they get there first. If you spawn and you start running as you're buying your items, okay, and you have 4.5% movement speed and you're hauling ass, um, this is ranked play, but people are very casual in ranked play sometimes with invading um, and getting to spots. Um, you might have somebody that's like, oh, you know, you go here, let me buy my items real quick. If I'm going to go stand in this brush, why am I rushing out two seconds in the game? You know, um, they, they are, they're really casual about it. So uh, I catch a lot of people in this brush all the time. If they don't show, if they don't show and it's like a minute goes by and uh, uh, you got minions spawning in 30 seconds, don't go this way. This is a very bad way to go because if they're in this bush or this bush, from right here, once you show right there, they see you. Yeah, exactly. There's there's no point. Now, if you come around this way, you face check this bush really quick. Make sure there's nobody there, or even right here, you can you can actually go flip them. Um, and you come around this corner here. First off, nobody stands in this bush. That's a terrible bush to stand in. So if you come around this corner right here, and by the time you show yourself, look how close you are to that bush. You're that close. Again, there's no word. There's no word to the, the flash. They're not flashing this way. They're not flashing that. Way. There's nowhere to flash. Again, if there's nobody there, you go and get up in this bush. Again, when you face check this bush, look, look, how much time do they have react from somebody coming in here? Nothing. They have no time because you're hugging this wall and it's all you know, uh, fog of war. So, so anyways, so those are the two ways each way that I always invade um, with singed. And I'm telling you, the ghost flip is is phenomenal for first blood. Um, don't underestimate it. It's really good. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and here's the thing: like nobody ever has takes the time to sit down and take a look at a map and think about things, you know. And that's why, I would, like from a coaching standpoint, the first session I always go through like a mock game of different strategies on the map about where you can go, where you proxy, um, good places to back, hidden areas, and um, and that way you can kind of put your game together with the fundamentals. And it take it took me a very very long time to understand little tricks here and there that I'm gonna kind of show you in the first hour, and there's gonna be stuff that it took me literally 300 singe games to figure out that I'm I'll tell you and it'll just click. So, anyways, so that's invade. Um, if you get first blood, you buy a, a, a sapphire. Um, I. Yes, that's if you get the first blood, right? If if you, if, uh, I always start um, flask, um, red pot, uh, and ward, right? Now, if that's honestly, I start that in diamond play. 
if I'm smurfing, I always start flask and three red pots, because I don't give a crap about a ward, but I, I shouldn't be teaching that. Uh, <laughs> but that's just smurfing. Um, anyways, but if you do get an assist, it's an automatic 75 gold. Um, always buy your, finish off your red pots. Um, that way, you, you know, you have uh, a flask, three red pots, and a ward, right? Um, so anyways, so now you're level one. Um, let's say you do get first blood, like I said, buy that sapphire. You are not going to build tier. Please don't build tier. Tier is terrible and singed. It's, o it's okay, but mathematically, we did all the math, and Rod of Ages crushes tier by a lot. Yeah, the only reason why you see a lot of these high level guys play um, with uh, tier is because what they do is when they change into archangels, they use it for the shield as bait. Is what they do, and, and and that's kind of like a different play style of playing. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I mean, I'm I'm no pro. I mean, I'm good, but I'm no pro, and I'm not gonna sit here and use you know archangels to debate with singed. I mean, that's that's not my play style, and I don't think it should be. Um, when you see Search Edge do it, he kind of he builds a different. He kind of builds like a really crazy. Um, you know, super AP heavy, you know, uh, kind of a singed, and it's kind of a different play style for him. But for but for the play style that I teach, it's it's not viable, and uh, your rod of ages is way better. So, anyways, so what you're gonna do is uh, level one. Let's pretend you don't get, um, you know, you, you personally don't get first bloods. So you're gonna go into lane, and what your objective is, level one. Um, you're gonna last at the minions, obviously, with your auto attack. If there's two minions that are super low at the same time, you're gonna miss one. Do the whole auto attack flip thing. You can do the auto and you can flip a minion at the same time and you'll essentially get both a CS. Um, don't be afraid to use your flip to get a CS. Please don't ever be afraid. I flip candy minions all the time because it's 50 gold and I don't want to fuck up. You know what I mean? Because auto attacking with a singe is a pain in the ass uh, to get a last hit. So, mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Yep. So, so anyways, um, once you hit 475 gold, okay, um, th no, this is, this, let's say, like I said, the, pretend you didn't get first blood, okay, and that, that's how we're gonna go, um, you're sitting in lane with flask and, and a health pot, and you just, you ward, you know, the bush right here, um, you're auto attacking your minions, you're getting your CS, um, you're probably harassing back and forth a little bit, no big deal, blow those flasks, I, it doesn't matter, just blow the crap out of the flasks, um, go ahead, mm -hmm. yep, Okay, well, to be honest, um, as I always ward here no matter what. It doesn't matter what side I'm on. Um, I'm always going to be pushing up. So if I'm over here and they come through try, um, see, I am never, almost 90% of the time, I I'm, if they're coming through try and they're coming this way for me, um, I'm always going to try to have ghost up, but I usually lose it in the invade when I see somebody and I get it. Um, so it's a tough call. Um, you can ward this if you feel that that's the way to go. But if they come this way, that means that they're invading right here. And they're coming in this way. Because if they have to come this way, this ward will see them. You know, this ward will see up to this wall. So um, if they come this way and then come around, uh, you should see that. So I always prefer to ward this bush right here no matter what. So, um, so anyways... So level one, you have um, you're sitting here. You're trying to get your 475 gold. Um, if you get your 475 gold and you have mana left, you have plenty of health left. Okay, before you back, dump your health, dump your mana, harass the crap out of them, make them lose your pots because you're gonna back and you're TPing back in lane. Okay, um, what this really allows you to do is, um, I kind of give people this theory: if somebody gets two kills on you, and you went and backed and you got an item and they still are in lane and they have not backed, they have not bought. You're ahead in lane. Yeah, exactly. It's not doing anything. Okay. So if you come back in the lane after the two and a half minute mark, three minute mark, you TP in. They're already low because you harassed them a little bit. You have all your flasks available and you bought a ruby crystal. Okay. And you're going to build, you're going to rush uh, Rod of Ages first, obviously. That's why you build, buy, buy your ruby crystal. Um, so you're up on an item. You've already harassed them, and now you're essentially free farming. Okay, they are not going to trade so much with you anymore at this point. 
okay? It's going to allow you to push up to their tower a little bit here. Um, if it's like a Shen, you know, just be careful when walking by a tower because he will taunt you a tower. Um, you, what I always tell people, push up this wave really quick, um, as fast as you can, kill it as fast as you can. Yep, uh, yeah, after, as soon as you first back because you're going to probably be around level 4 by then. At level 4, you should be able to proxy, no problem, at least 2 or 3 waves. So what you're going to essentially do is this, you're going to push up. If there's somebody dangerous here that you just don't want to be harassed going by the tower, it's no problem. Look, this is a nice little path right here. Just come in, come through this bush, and meet the CS. And the other side of the map, um, it's going to be a little bit harder. You're going to have to push a lot faster because this is a long walk around here. I've done it plenty of times, but you really need to push fast. Um, so um, what I usually like to do if there is a Shen, I'll play with him a little bit. I'll walk, act like I'm going to go proxy, and I'll back off as soon as I see him coming close. Yep, and when he dashes, I spam my forward slash L, and then I go right by him. <laughs> I do it all the time. Um, so, uh, what I always like to do, too, is every time I back, if I have a little bit extra money, I always buy an extra ward. I do it nonstop. If you're coming and you're proxying here, ward their red. You have so much time to react if you ward there to any jungle coming at you. Um, they they're just they can't kill you if if you react to them be walking past red sorry nobody's kicking you coming from over here and coming in through this tower i mean it's just not going to happen um it's going to be this way if they come in this way and he comes in this way you have all this space to run they're, they're not going to catch you especially if you have ghost up and you hit level six and you get ulti um i have jungles come at me all the time i will run at them they get so confused when they see you running at them. I will run straight at them. I will I will ulti. I will flip them over my shoulder, and I just keep going. And that, you they, you look back behind you. They're at half health, and then they start chasing you for a second before they realizing that it really hurts, and they'll back off and realize that they really don't want to mess with you. Um, so but what you're going to constantly do also is you're going to go creep wave. You're going to do double golems, creep wave, back. And then the reason why I say back is because double golems are dead already. They take 50 seconds to spawn. Um, and that's kind of going to be your rotation here. I usually do um, creep wave, double golems, creep wave, back. Um, every time. And so let's say you proxy a wave here. I'm going to explain this to you here. You proxy a wave here, and you back. Well, let's pretend the wave didn't die. Okay? And the wave comes up, and it's still going, and it's still going. By this time, you would have killed it by now. By this time, you're probably backing. The creep wave's coming. Now they're fighting. Okay. Now you're back. Okay. What I'm trying to explain to you is this. Now the next creep wave is starting to spawn. You're already in the fountain. You're running out of the fountain. The creep wave's probably around here. You're probably around here. Well, that means that the creep wave is here. Okay. So you've missed no CS. You haven't missed anything. You've gotten all the. You got the CS from the last wave. And, see, if you get the CS when it's right here, okay, by the time you kill it and you start backing, the next wave's already starting to come, and you're going to miss CS. But since you're killing it back here, you have all that time to back before the next wave spawns. Does that make sense? So that's, that's why don't be afraid to proxy a wave and back. You can do it any time you want. You will never miss a CS. And at the, remember what I, I said earlier. If you buy an item and they have not bought an item, you're ahead in lane. You've utilized your gold, you know? And that's what I always try to play by with Singed. Um, and that's why, uh, like, the last game that I, I played, actually, um, I was able to back. I had a Catalyst, and I had Boots. And the guy I was playing against in lane still had not backed. All he had in lane was a Dorn Shield, okay? At that point, I won't proxy. I'll harass the crap out of him because it's, it's, it's almost essentially a free kill, and it's a free dive if your jungle comes top. Um, but also, let me teach you um, something from a mathematical standpoint here that I usually teach everybody. Um, and this, I want you to kind of uh, write, write these numbers down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mana, right. Right, because you want the health. Right, but I mean, if you have the gold, I mean, you might as well buy the mana crystal on the way into lane, you know. So, so anyways, so let's pretend you're proxying here. A wave creep, a creep wave's coming. Okay, 
you, you start to proxy. Next thing you know, you have top running at you. You have jungle coming in here. Okay? And now you see mid coming in here. Okay, so it's essentially three. You know, mid's here, jungle's here, and the top's coming in at you. You're like shit. You you finish because you, when you proxy, you usually proxy in right here into this little curve area, and the creeps follow you in, and then sometimes you run back and whatever. You'll you'll hit your you'll hit your ulti button, obviously. You'll probably hit your ghost. <laughs> You're probably gonna run at these two and try to flip one and run past the other. Okay, um, you've essentially gotten all your creeps. Creep waves clear. You got your 150 gold. So write down 150, like for you, plus 150. Okay. Now, top is chasing you now. Okay. Top has ditched his creeps. They are now dying to the tower. Okay. He's minus 150 gold. Okay. Now jungle, jungle for coming up top and trying to gank you and chasing you is probably lost. I'm gonna say time wise in a jungle. Let's say about a um. Uh, camp and a half. So let's say 100 gold. So minus 100 gold for the jungler. Mid. Mid ran all the way the fuck from mid. All the way through here. Came all the way up. Yeah, it's like a wave and a half. Yeah, they're not 300. We're going to say 200. We'll, we'll just be we'll, minus 200 for them. Okay. So let's say they get the kill. We'll give them the kill. Screw it. They killed you. Big deal. Big whoop. They get 400 gold for the 300 gold plus the assist of 100 gold. Okay. So after killing you, after subtracting the gold that they lost from creeps, how much money did they make? They lost 50 gold. Okay. <laughs> so, but what you forgot to also account is you got the 150 gold. That's correct. So now, on top of, so they just ganked you. What happened? They lost the 200 gold from ganking you. Yes. Not only that, not only that, but what did you allow your team to do? And if you have three top, what does this do right here? It's free. It's straight up free, dude. Mm-hmm. Straight up free. If you get that, you essentially just turned, um... Yes. That's exactly what I do. I'll tell people in the beginning of the game. I'll say, look, if they, I will proxy a little bit. I'm not going to feed. But if they come three top, you guys better get your ass dragon. And I'll let my team know sometimes. You know, I'll let them in the beginning of the game. And a lot of high-level tier, you know, I'm, it's not going to happen in gold um, very often. Um, you kind of got to step them through the process of. But high plat to diamond, they should be able to respond to that, hopefully. Um, and diamond won't even need to say anything. Um, but at the same time, so if, if you do get dragon, you essentially died for, uh, 1100 gold is what you just did, um, uh, by the time it was all said and done. And if you didn't die, say you, you do ghost out because it happens all the time. I can 3v1 all the time, bro. If you ghost out and you ulti out and they chase you and you get away and you still survive, not only did you just capitalize 600 gold, but you also got dragon for another 900 gold for your team. Now you're up 1,500 freaking gold just for that. So when I say carry a team, I don't mean go 5-0, and 6-0 and in lane to carry. That's, that's not, I don't like that definition of carrying. Carrying is not always kills. There are different things you can do to carry a game, and that's essentially one of them, you know? Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, if you... Yeah, here's here's what's happening next. Here's here's your next play. Okay, this is, this is after that. This is probably going to be around level 7. Okay? Your TP is going to be getting ready to come back up. Um, what you're going to do is, is you're going to... You're gonna proxy a wave. First off, when you have about a minute left on your TP, you're gonna be spamming bottom. You say, "Look, put a ward right here." Say, "Put a ward right there." I am TPing in if they if they come in on you, if they push up against tower um, at all. If they push up a little bit, I'm coming in. Okay. So you tell them this. You put a put a ward there. Now, at round level seven, you're gonna go ahead. You're gonna proxy in. Um, you're probably gonna hit level seven or eight, um, and then your your TP is gonna come up. 
And what proxying that wave does, okay, is remember how I said that you can back and you still get the lane in the time? Well, if you TP in now, okay, that's going to give you that much more time to make sure that once you TP in and you try for that double kill there, which you will get a lot by TPing in with Ghost, Ghost and Ulti with Singed, okay, um, that you have time to essentially still back and get back before you even tower, even even remotely harmed. They're not going to do anything to you from one creep wave to that tower. You know, so you, you essentially have about a minute and a half to get back top again after TPing bot. That's plenty of time after proxying that wave right there. So you TP in. They're pushed up right here. Now it's 3v2. You have Ghost and, and, and Ulti on with Singe. You're flipping people back into your team. Hopefully your jungle would be coming in too, because if that happens, then it's a 4v2. Um, and like I said, he can't do anything. He can't push in this tower. He's got no creeps. You've already proxied him. Okay? So um, if you get that double kill, or if you kill, you're going to kill at least one, I'm telling you right now. I don't care if they flash or not. With Ghost and Ulti, somebody's dying. Um, I'll, I'll dive all the way back here. Like I don't even care, because um, you're so beefy as singed. So anyways, um, you're gonna either A, it's free tower, or B, free dragon. And if your lane is getting crushed, and I say crushed like 0-3, I mean, if, if it's like 0-7, 7 minutes of the game, I mean, you, it's a good game. Like, you ain't carrying that. <laughs> so, but regardless, um, you know, now they're 2-3, and three, and you essentially just got tower or you got, bear, or you got dragon. Um, everybody's back in the game again. And a lot of people, you have, this is, I'm a firm believer of this. A lot of people who suck in lane are actually good mid to late game um i see so many bronze players that are terrible freaking trash in lane bro okay but when it comes to mid game they're actually not too bad like when it comes to like team fights they you know they can hold their own sometimes you know and everybody seems to be working okay as a team a little bit and they got a good combo going you know so um so sometimes what i'll tell myself is you know what they didn't do good in lane that's fine but they're gonna they'll, they'll pick up they'll pick up end game they, everybody knows how to play their tune end game you know once they they have items you know so anyways um so that's that's a nice little play that I like to do as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right now it's gonna be a decision that you're gonna make um, if your jungle's full health um, it doesn't matter if your AD carry in your in your support are a little low because the only person you essentially really have to worry about um, after that is their jungle and maybe mid coming in. I mean, if if that's the case, if they're low, you're probably going to go with them. Um, if people are nice and healthy, um, then you you can leave them. I leave them all the time. Um, they they usually won't. Here's the thing too: if it is warded, like you have a pink on it, and you know that no, nothing's there. Um, if they see me running in here after killing them, if they see us running to dragon and they know we're doing it, they think for doing it. So if I'm backing in this bush um, or over here, they're not going to see that. They're going to assume four people are there, including Singe. They're not even going to try. They'll just leave it alone. But you kind of you kind of make them think like you're doing it sometimes, even though I am backing. Um, just, try, just try to play tricks like that all the time. Just play mind games with them. Um, so you're back. You're in lane. Do your thing. Whatever. Um, a couple things, nice little tricks I like to point out. Um, let's say you're blue side. Um, you come in here and the jungle comes in. You're sitting in this but I, What I usually like to do is I, I kill a wave. I Like I said, I, I do double golems. And I'll sit in this bush each time and, and wait. Um, and if the jungle comes in, I'll wait until he face checks this brush and then flip him. And then I'll ghost away this way. Um, or, or ulti and stuff. What I usually like to do is I'll make my poison trail come around this brush right here like this. Okay? And if they follow your poison trail, and then I turn my poison trail off right here. Okay? And it makes it look like the illusion that I'm heading towards this brush. What I'll do is I'll turn my poison trail off and then jet back into this brush. And they'll, every time, dude, they'll just go whoop, and they'll follow this way, and they'll come over here and go, oh, shit, he's not here. By that time, I'm already back here backing. Okay? So you try to use your poisonous bait almost like like you really went this way when you really went that way. Um, I do that. I use the tricks like that all the time. When you do back, if you do back, do back here. Um, this is a blind spot. If somebody face checks this brush to check for you and you're not there, they can't see you backing right here. So that's a good spot. And then also right here. 
if you're practicing right here, if somebody face checks this brush or this brush looking for you, they can't see you right here. Okay, so this I always back right here in between creep waves. I always wait right here, um, and I will always ward blue. Like that way, I can see them coming in, and I can't tell you how many blues I've stolen by doing that as well. Um, if you're a nuisance, like I said, you're taking double golems, or you're taking, you're doing a creep wave. You're taking wolf. You're taking creep wave. You're taking wolf. Um, dude, you're you're being a, a freaking nuisance to the jungle. I mean, think about remember uh, season two um, when Darian with Shivana top. It, it's exactly the same exact thing, bro. Um, you're doing exactly that, except you're doing it to plat level and low level diamond players. They don't know how to deal with that shit. <laughs> they couldn't deal with it in LCS. They can't deal with it here. Okay. Um, so um, I see people sitting in this thing getting ready to gank me all the time. I will run right at them because the faster I run at them, their top's all the way up here. He, he has to run all this way to try to get me. By the time I flip him and he's sitting in my poison, he's already too low to even think about engaging with his top. He's already well out of there. He don't he don't want to touch that. Um, be very aggressive on the jungle if they come for you. The more aggressive that you are, the more they realize that when you they come after you, they're gonna pay for it. You know, and and they don't want to deal with that. They they're just gonna leave you alone for the rest of the game. So, um, so like I said, ward here, um, ward here, depending on you know. Vice versa. So, um, uh, what other, what else is there? Um, I'll show you how to engage. I show everybody this video too. Uh, like a couple little tricks that you can do. This is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll kind of pause it and do slow motion a little bit. You see my teams right here. Uh, they're up by like three kills. Their Tristana is super fed. That's why you see her in front of the team because she has no fear. She has so much freaking farm and, and kills um, at this point in the game. Uh, so anyway, so we have our team in here. Um, you're not going to catch a Tristana with, you know, a Thresh, a Kale, an Ezreal, or a Xin Zhao. It's not going to happen. So I have Home Guard on, uh, on my boots. I have TP up, I have Ghost up, I have Ulti up. So watch what I do. I start TPing in. How do you react to this? Yeah, look, look at this. All right, let's go right back. Look how fast that is. Like you have no time to react to that. By the time you actually see her, she ultis me. She ultis me here, except she does it into her own group. <laughs> Because she has no time to react. By the time you react to that, yeah, and it just there's so much panic and chaos that you put forth on the other team that they just don't know what to do. They even had a Tark on their team. He couldn't even stun me fast enough. The stun would have been in midair by the time I flipped somebody. You know, look at their look at their jungle's reaction. <laughs> you know, and uh, those are the kind of things that you do do that to a to a gold level, platinum level you know, game and, and see how they react to that. There's nobody in the world that can react. Um, so, you know, that, that essentially won us the game in the end, you know, doing that. So, those are just the, the type of plays that you can pull off um, with, with Singe there. Um, and then another thing I always like to do, um, what I like to teach people, is, you know, say it's the late game, you got, say you got the two mid towers down, and you got inhibitors up, you got towers up. Um, it's around, you know, everybody wants Baron at this point. Baron is the big thing. Everybody wants to kill Baron. Okay, you, everything's just stalemated. You can't siege up. They can't siege on you. And the game just sucks at this point. Um, go back, okay? Buy a ward. Buy a pink ward. Okay? Go pink ward the damn Baron yourself. Don't, don't ask. Just, just go buy it and pink it. Okay? And what you're doing is you're setting your team up. You're going to come through, you're going to come mid, you're going to kill this next wave of creeps here, you're going to let your, your creeps push up, you're going to show yourself, you're going to say, hey, look at me, I'm singed, come kill me, I dare you. You're going to ping the shit out of Baron, tell your team to go fucking Baron, and you will 5v1 their team, you don't give a fuck, okay, you're going to, I did this against Boy Boy, and Boy Boy didn't, essentially said, uh, 
they're doing Baron. There's nothing we can do. Singe is just going to block us. That, that's exactly what Voiboy said. So what I do is I'll show mid. I'll push up on their inhibitor right here, okay? They're going to have like four or five people here thinking that you want to engage, that you have your team behind you. By the time they realize that your team is doing Baron, okay, it's going to be about 10 seconds. They're all like, oh, crap. You know what? His He's... He's showing himself mid. His team's missing. They might be doing Baron. They're going to come through here. They're probably going to come this way. I'll throw a little puddle down, a little sticky you. I'll slow him down. Okay, I'm just going to stall him as much as possible. By this time, you have raw eyes too, right? So if they're running in your poison, that's enough. They're being slowed again. So as soon as I throw that goo down there, they're coming this way. They're, they're not going to come this way to Baron. That's not what people do, okay? And if they do, it's going to be dead by then. So come in. Throw the goo down, come into this bush. As soon as you all see them come, they're going to be moving as a group of five. Throw your ulti on. By that time, you'll have your goo up again. Throw your goo down at the bush. Start running. Run a little bit slow if they, because they're going to be stuck in the goo. Run a little slow and just make yourself the path between them and Baron. Make them run through your poison the entire way to Baron. Just slow them. Just harass them. Just you know. And, and if it comes to the point where they catch you and you, that you die, it's not a big deal. You gave yourself up for a Baron. Uh, it's perfectly legit. You know. I mean, it's game changing when you do stuff like that. Um, on the purple side, yep, I do the same exact thing. That's actually the, the side I actually did with Boy Boy. What you usually do is you usually ward right here, um, and then ward right here. I do the same thing. If they come up, they have to come. Um, one of two ways. They either come up through here and then the blue side and just go straight in. But normally, if you're showing mid, they're not going to be going this way to go to Baron. They they want to cut through here. They want to go this way. I don't know why. Just people just want to go that way. I will throw the goo in in this little gap right here because for me, I'll be standing here and they'll be cutting in. I don't want to cut in front of them. I'm just going to die if I do that instantly. So I'll throw the goo in front of them. And then I'll run around here with like a ghost and ulti and get into this bush right before they do. And I can use a CM because there's a ward there too. And I'll just and I'll just harass them, like I said. I'll make them run through my poison. I'll make them come in here. And it actually this is actually a better fight, believe it or not, because your team isn't blocked by walls and things like that. Um, it's a little bit more of a, a straight shot. Um, but no, I, I do the same exact thing on the other side. You do. It's, it's a really good play. I do it all the time. It works great. Um, you know, so, so like, again, like I said, the definition of carry is necessarily kills, okay? It's, it's, it's getting your team objectives. That's your goal at, when I'm playing, when I, when I play Singe, you know, that's essentially what I try to do. So, um, so yeah, you'll, you'll see me, like, I'll be like level eight and I already have tower down. Um, I'll be pushing right here. Like, what are they going to do? Are they going to bring jungle in on me here and then, like, try to kill a Singed who's already half his tower down, a shitload of gold, and I have ulti and ghost up? Like, I'll, I'll sit here. I'll auto-attack the tower. I'll go and proxy another wave over here. If they're pulling mid back here, if they're pulling their jungle in here, and I still have my lane that's AD carry right in here, dude, they're, they're all the pressure is completely off this lane. They don't care about this right now. They only care about, oh, my God, we're losing a two-tier tower already um, at that point. The more pressure you put on the map, the better chance you have of winning a game. You know, it's the same thing I've seen enemy teams with Baron before, and they just weren't able to push in lanes. They weren't able to get towers. Why? I'll run in. I'll proxy two waves, back. Proxy this wave, back. You know, and yeah, they can push mid, but I mean, but I have TP up. You know, the whole team's there. I'll just tell team to stay mid. If if you're constantly pushing these wave creep waves out. The, you know, a lot of p teams are very reluctant to dive towers without creep waves. So if they're constantly being pushed out on them, I'll, I'll do this too. If if they have a creep wave right here, or or they're pushing my creep wave, I'll run by them. I'll run their entire by their entire team of five people. They'll have Baron buff. I'll run by them and proxy a wave behind them. Okay, now they they have yeah. Now they're like shit. We have no creeps coming. What are we gonna do? We can't just go, you know. I mean, you could, I mean, if it's late enough in a game, but not a lot of people still do, regardless, especially with your team standing there. Without creeps, it's dangerous. So, um, I see them do it all the time. I'll go this way, and they'll be pushing up, thinking that they want to get this inhibitor mid, and I'll just come right around here, and just proxy a wave, and run right back in here and back, <laughs> and they don't know what to do in that situation. So, there's all kinds of little neat little tricks you can do like that. So, yeah. yeah.
Yeah. That's what most people say. Like, I don't... What I usually do is, um, like, the first lesson, I usually do free for people. And I, I try to take them through, like, a mock game. And then um, after that, um, I used to coach a little bit, too, um, for a while with different websites. And I used to charge $20 an hour. Or I would do, like, $100 for eight hours worth of lessons. And each hour, what I would do is um, I'll play, you, like, your counter. Uh, you'd be like, oh, I'm having trouble against Riven. What do I do? I'll play Riven. You know, I'll go through. I'll say, okay, this is how you do this. Or... Or I'll play Singe and I'll have you play Ribbon against me and see what it is I do and I'll step you through it. Um, what to do when they freeze lane on you. Um, you know, all those different little tricks. Um, and I'll do those in different hour sessions. But I think it's most important before you even get to that point is you have to understand the game as a whole. You have to understand the mathematics and the mathematical theory of the game. Um, until you understand that, you're not going to be able to understand how to play Singe correctly. Um, and that's why you see, I it's, it's, people say proxy singed means going 0 and 10 in lane and just run past people into towers. No, that's that's not what I call proxy singed. You know, I still play very safe in lane. Um, if you can pro, I, I I think a proxy like I'm behind the tower killing a creep wave with nobody there and free farming. That's why I think of proxy. Um, and and I can still get away and not feed my lane. I'm being twice as productive. You know, than somebody that's just dying to towers. So, but anyways. So yeah. So, you, you, you have. I know you have questions. So, oh, another thing too, blue buff. Um, this is I I, I do this play all the time. Um, I as soon as I see blue buff spawn, okay, and a lot of times blue buff spawns, you'll see jungle over here by ward, you know, and you're like, oh, it's free. Okay, ping your mid, ping your jungle, ping both of them, um, ping your assist, and start blue. And what you're essentially telling them is, look, I'm on blue. If you want it, it's yours. Okay. Now, if they come in 90% of the time, they're going to come in this, li this little lane right here. Okay. And they're going to come around and they want to get blue buff. Okay. If they're in this lane right here, as soon as they cut to this little area, if you, when you start blue, you flip it over here. Okay. Blue buff's right here. You're right here. Okay? Put yourself against this wall. When blue buff runs back to you, you can flip the blue buff right over this wall. Yep. And it goes right here, and it does not reset because it's still close enough that you can kill it um, without resetting. So um, I do that all the time, and I can't tell you how many mid players are just, like, they love you, dude. They, they just go berserk over stuff like that because you've essentially gave them a safe blue buff. You know, they didn't have to run all the way over there. They didn't lose time. They're not in danger of dying. Um, it's in, get the blue buff, and out. Um, everybody wins. You've stolen a buff. Mid's happy they have a blue, or the jungle has a blue, and now they can give the mid a blue without having to worry about, oh, I want blue buff. Uh, there's just so many different things. So, yeah. All those little tricks, like I said, it took it took me a long time to figure out um, that you can do stuff like that. You know, with singed and um, a lot, a lot of a lot of neat little plays that, that you can do. And so, and ho hopefully that'll that'll give you a start. Um, I know you have mechanics. Um, you just need to play singed a little bit, play in 10, 15 games, get used to those mechanics a little bit more, and then you'll start to incorporate the theory of how to play. Um, you know, like the way I do, essentially. So. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, level two, you're going to get your poison. So what I essentially do is as soon as level two hits, dude, I am pretty much poisoning all my creeps all the time. Um, you will obviously want to toggle it on and off, though. You don't just want to leave the poison going because, I mean, it stays there for three seconds. Why am I going to leave it on wasting mana? Um, so, but I also, as I'm auto I will poison as I'm auto attacking. I never, ever, ever, ever rely on poison to last hit for me. That's stupid. That's like bronze play right there. You know, you still have to last hit with auto attacks because it's like it's like putting down a Heimerdinger turret and saying, "Last hit my minions for me, turret." You know what I mean? You can't. It's no guarantee. You know, you still need to last hit with auto attacks. So, and then what you can do is when you get really good with your mechanics, you can be like, um, "I can't get this minion with a normal auto attack, and I'm not going to get it before the tank minion hits it and kills it." So. 
I will do like a, um, you know, if you, if there all, either A, you can use your flip to get the minion, or B, you can use a Q auto attack, where as soon as you toggle your Q, it automatically does poison damage immediately, and you auto attack at the same time. So it's kind of like a double auto attack in a way, when if that makes sense. Um, because the, the poison hits it, and you're auto attacking at the same time, which also gets also gets the, the CS. So, mm -hmm. Yep, I'll go Rod of Ages as soon as I finish my Rod of Ages. Um, I go, actually, believe it or not, I go immediately Boots 3 into Home Guard. Okay? Because at, yeah, if at the 11 minute mark, TP with Home Guard Ghost Ulti is, it, it's a 100% kill. If you can't get a kill with that, you shouldn't be playing League of Legends. <laughs> That's how easy it is. Um, I've, I've made so many plays with that, and people get so ticked dude they're just like how the fuck is that fair you know what i mean like i'll come over here because um you know they'll, they'll have they'll have this warded over here and you know they'll be over here they'll have the blue buff warded um that way they can see when they do blue buff and somebody will be over here and i'll ping it i'll be like i'm coming in i'm coming in and i'll tp in they'll start running off and next thing they know they see a singe coming at them at 1200 movement speed and flip them back into the ad carry and and you know support and and they're just what do you do you know you're like f they even if they flash away from me i'm i mean 1200 movement speed dude you're not getting very far <laughs> so so anyways yeah and you know make plays make plays you know that's, that's all there is to it keep that and, and i love home guard too because not only can you can you proxy more with home guard you can get in here if you, you can harass um harass people Get, get get in their face dive towers you know come out of there with 25 percent health left and be like yeah what now bitch back and get right the fuck back in lane in like 20 seconds you know and because you have home guard you know and do it again and they're just like crap man just leave me the hell alone you keep on coming back like every 10 seconds with freaking full health you know and i love that aspect and it, that's the thing it's pressure 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 you know, and eventually they're going to have to bring people at you. you. They can't just leave you there. And when that happens, your team takes objectives. So it's just all about giving them the opportunity to do it. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of it you're gonna be able to apply to other champions too I'm sure you know so so but so enjoy be be sure to rate me because you can rate people in coaching I appreciate it <laughs> thanks thanks so yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly as soon as it goes as soon as it goes live you're gonna be able to start charging and stuff like that and um Exactly. There's a couple people that have um, tens as well. There's a couple people that have like nine point fours. And um, I right now, what you cannot do is you can't look at people's ratings. You can't read the reviews. And I think they need to change that. I'll have to send an email to them asking. Uh, that way, people can actually read your reviews of people. So I think that's important, um, rather than just a solid number sitting there. Because you can read your own reviews, but other people can't read them. That's kind of weird. I agree. Yeah, they will. I, I really like the idea, so it's pretty cool. So, I've already gotten a lot of followers on stream already and stuff from doing it and, and everything. So, yeah. Anyways, cool. If you, yeah, if you, you know, you got any questions later on too, feel free to, to holler at me. Send me a, you know, hey man, I'm, I'm, what do you do? What do you buy against this person I'm leaning against? You know, it, yeah, just hit me up and I can answer those questions. So, cool. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Good, good. I'm glad you glad you found it helpful. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good one. And uh, you got any questions? Like I said, just let me know. All right. Later. God, you love that.